Good morning, everybody. This is the Personal Playlist Podcast, fondly referred to as the P3 on Voice Ed Radio. I'm Noah Daniel. I am so excited to have Jay Dubois here on the Personal Playlist Podcast. Jay is an energetic primary junior teacher and instructional coach in the Thames Valley DSB. He's interested in cross-curricular, community-based learning, and using technology to uncover and document curriculum in real, authentic circumstances. He co-led an Ontario Ministry of Education's TLLP Action Research Program, the members of the Listen Louder, Amplifying Student Voice with Technology and Mathematics project team. Last year, he embraced the power of one-to-one through iPads and had a blast transitioning his students from consumers into content creators with authentic learning experiences that connected with the real world. Jay is a Google Certified Innovator and Educator. He was recently accepted into the Google Certified Innovator Academy and launched an education project that looks to turn up teacher voices to 11 and make teacher-to-teacher sharing contagious by leveraging YouTube, Google Hangouts, and a Nominate Forward strategy. He's passionate about rubrics and enjoys introducing teachers to the power of using self-assessed single point rubrics in honoring student voice in the assessment cycle. Welcome to the show, Jay. Hey, hey Noah. What a pleasure to be here. Um, it's a pleasure. We first met actually through On Ed Chat and we met in person for the first time at TEDx and then we actually got to meet in person again um, at EdTech Camp for YRDSB. So it's been a privilege knowing you and I'm so happy that you're on the show. No, it's it's great. And it's it's been great to see this podcast grow as well as of scrolling through just a huge amount of episodes that you've you've created over the past uh, bit of time. So it's uh, hopefully you're having fun because um, time sure seems to fly, doesn't it? <laughs> it does fly. And I'm having so much fun. Like the thing about this show is though, even though the format is always the same, every person brings a new energy and a new experience and of course, a new story. So tell me a little bit about your story preparing for the Personal Playlist podcast. Well, it, it's interesting. And I, I think this is a bit of a theme. I'm certainly not the first person to uh, suggest that being approached by you is it, it's, it's such an honor to, to kind of just be able to chat with someone outside of the school day and talk education and all this good teacher talk stuff. Um, but when you pair that with, can you please select three songs that frame your life? Um, <laughs> it turns into a, a daunting piece of homework. Um, although a homework that you love, you love to do. It, it's a lot of fun, but I've been thinking about this for almost half of a year. And wow. um, I, I think it wasn't just until two days ago where I was finally able to nail down um, these songs because music's just such a part of, of my life, like everyone's life. It is truly that soundtrack. Um, so what a fantastic reflective experience it's been. I'm so glad that it was fantastic. And it's funny because, you know, I always give lead time when my students do it, but they've never had six months. So I'm happy that you got to marinate on the idea and you feel good about your choices and you're here. So let's start with your nostalgic song. The goal of the show is that we share three songs and the first one is about going back. So it's a song that's supposed to represent something from your past. But what's so funny is nostalgia is actually in the first line of the song. So tell us a little bit about why you chose it. Yeah, so this song is by a, a great Canadian rock band called Big Wreck, and it's actually just entitled That Song. And the first line goes, so I always get nostalgic with that song. And it's funny, I've been thinking about um, using a song from this band for a long time, and it wasn't until I actually hit play, and I'm like, are you kidding me? It uses the word nostalgia. <laughs> like, this is meant to be. Um, yeah. And when it comes to a nostalgia song, like, I, I think back to my high school experience, and I had a really diverse playlist back then. But it's a different place where I, I wasn't exactly making that well known, right? Like what you're listening to, um, like you, you were a fear of being judged for, you know, uh, the types of bands you're into back then. That was the early 90s. And mm-hmm. I, I think about kids now where the more diverse your playlist, I mean, that kind of gets you extra kudos. So, um, you know, I, I kind of mm-hmm. wish I could try that high school thing again. And, and you know, kids have, you know... It, they're focused more on songs and albums, but they're pulling from all over the place. And, and when indie rock got started and um, there's all sorts of ways that people experience music now that's different. Um, but anyways, when I, when I kind of go back to listening to this, uh, it was just when university was getting started and I'm a, I am a musician. I love playing a lot of instruments and I have a 
terrible memory for lyrics, however. So more for me, I remember sounds over meaning. It's the way the songs make me feel from a melodic perspective. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think this song just sounds great. Every time I hear it, it makes me happy. Um, mm-hmm. It really c- captures Canadian rock from the 90s. And again, like that was sort of like the, you know, like your teen years, your early 20s. And and uh, those formative years, that, that music just sticks, right? You, you hear a song and it transports me back to that time in my life. Um, and, you know, I, I'd be blowing a lot of my money at Sam the Record Man, you know, just <laughs> picking up CD after CD. Um, the lead singer and guitarist, his name's Ian Thornley, and I, I consider him to almost be the Canadian Chris Cornell, if you know who Chris Cornell wow. is, of course. yes, I in, do. In my mind. <laughs> and the way this guy plays guitar and sings, it's just something to behold. So I saw them live with my then girlfriend and now wife. Was he as troubled? Her. Oh. I, not as troubled. Not, okay. not as troubled. Grumpy, but not as troubled. <laughs> um, but I, I saw them live uh, uh, with my wife back when she was at Laurier and I was at University of Waterloo. And they played a, a club called The Turret. And I, and I swear the floor was going to cave in. Um, just so many people crammed in there and the music was so loud. Um, and it's, I've seen them a few times since. And do you know what? Like they, they, they still rock. So um, my favorite connection to this song, sorry, long stories. No, I like this sometimes. so much. <laughs> my favorite connection to the song, um, I was actually asked to play bass in a, in a band uh, with my brother-in-law. And uh, like not, not a cool band. It, it was um, my brother-in-law went to med school at Western. And every year they'd hold a huge variety show and a couple hundred people would go and they'd do skits, but they always had a band for intermission. So he was the lead singer of this band and they didn't have a bass player. It's not like I was a med student, but they let me fill in. So I learned um, eight songs in a, in a few weeks and uh, it was actually at the Alt House Auditorium. So here in London, Alt House is the Faculty of Education's um, that education building. So that's where I went to Teachers College. So that's it's so really cool. cool. I went to yeah, Western, so about, but not for you did, not yeah. for the faculty, but yeah. Yeah, no, it was neat. So to go back, actually my first year of teaching, to go back and be playing bass on that stage mm-hmm. um, was kind of cool. And my favorite song of the night, we actually played that song by Big Rack. And uh, yeah, so now I jam to it with my son. He's a 10-year-old and he's picked up the guitar and it's a song he loves too. So yeah, it's, it's, it's my nostalgia pick for sure. Well, it's a nostalgia that keeps on giving. Those are fantastic stories. So let's hear it. That song by Canadian rock band, Big Rack. great song and it feels like a soundtrack like to a film like I can just see the scene playing out I don't know why in my head what an amazing thing to play with your son I can't imagine doing that it's it's pretty cool and you know it's funny with kids you don't want them to become a mini me but just kind of through osmosis you see your children kind of reflecting a lot of what your own personal interests are so it's funny because um uh like he he takes a lot of music lessons and when it's Christmas concert time, he always asks if he can play classic rock instead. So at his Christmas concert this year, he played Closer to the Heart by Rush <gasps> with the solo and everything as a 10-year-old. And all these dads are coming up to me afterwards saying, that was so cool. Because <laughs> everyone else is, you know, like playing Jingle Bells on the piano. And my son's like, let's crank it. Let's turn it up to 11, right? Nice. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a big joy for me. <laughs> 
Yeah, like you don't want to make mini me's, but at the same time, there are things you want to impart on your children, pieces of yourself. And it feels wonderful when it's something that they gravitate to and you know that it's theirs as well as yours. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's let's talk about, you know, the the song that really reflects who you are as a person and the song that, you know, is your identity song. So you chose a song that um, that we also are going to play a different version of. Tell me a little bit about why this song, why this guy. Yeah, so it's, it's another Canadian artist and his name is Danny Michelle. And the song is called Nobody Rules You. Um, and I, I love the story to this song. And it's neat because Noah, you're, you're part of this story. So um, <laughs> he was, you mentioned earlier, the uh, TEDx education talks happening in Kitchener. I think that was back in the fall of 2017. And I took a road trip uh, with some teachers from Thames Valley to go see, um, you know, all these inspirational speakers talking about education. And um, awesome. yeah, like a huge venue, so much energy, uh, you know, like in the, in the space. And then eventually uh, this guy comes out with a guitar and a huge screen behind him. He, he starts sharing this story on how um, as, a, as, a, as an artist, he was invited to uh, go on this kind of like uh, ad- adventure ship tour. And, and C- Commander Hadfield was uh, one of the people on the boat and, and he was invited to go and just create. So they're on this ancient or like this huge like Russian ship. It's this icebreaker. <laughs> this icebreaker, uh, yeah. Outfit. Right. And um, he said he wrote a full album's worth of songs while, you know, coasting through glaciers and just experiencing this world that so few humans get the chance to actually see in person. Um, so anyways, he, he played a, a few songs, but the one that stuck with me was called Nobody Rules You. And it was just him when in his solo guitar and like great voice. But I, again, like I said, like melody pulls me in first. And there was just something in the way like I'm like, I had to go home and learn how to play that song. And um, I mean, not that I can get to it justice, but I had to grab my guitar. Um, but then I started tuning into what he was actually singing about. And, um, mm-hmm. and I remember being there in the audience and it just kind of one of those songs where you could have a thousand people not make a sound and they're just hanging on every word. For me, it felt like that kind of moment with that song. Um, and, and I love the message. So uh, some of his lyrics around it, like, um, be who you want to be, love who you want to love. Don't let them hold you down. They don't make the rules. Nobody rules me or nobody rules you rather. So like it spoke to me uh, as a teacher, but also as a, a, as a dad too. Um, So like somebody needs to be the person who sells a million records. Somebody needs to be the person who invents something magical. So kids might as well believe it could be them. Um, And it's, I, I, I want kids to be dreamers. Right. And we lose that so early in life. We lose that optimism and that sense of whimsy. So I, I like to pull in these themes in my classroom as much as possible. And certainly with my, my son and my daughter, um, just always questioning them. Well, like, why are you shutting yourself down there? Why are you saying no to that? Like that opportunity is there. Someone has to, to take it. If, if you feel it, go for it. It has to be someone. So I just really loved like the nobody rules you piece. So I knew I wanted to do something with my grade three class around it. And um, we'd recently uh, finished a five-day force school. Um, so in our, in our board, we were, uh, they opened up applications and you could post how you teach cross-curricularly over five days in a forest and truly treat it as a real extension of your classroom. So using all the curriculum and I put in this massive um, application and won the opportunity. So uh, we truly like did everything with our iPads and documenting the whole magical experience. We owned that forest for a week in the fall. Um, and it was all about stewardship and conservationism and um, documenting our experience to share forward and then um, have a sharing night and, and, and take our learning and, and be able to share those documentations. There are videos of their chipmunk sounds and capturing, you know, tree frogs and uh, everything was photographed and filmed with macro lenses. So it was just a, like a magical week. Like, the, I, I, like there will never be a week as a teacher that will top that. Um, so as we came out of this uh, experience, the song stuck with me and like, you know what? I want to make like kind of a video showcasing some of the kids work. Um, what an amazing song that could be the soundtrack mm. to the showcase video because no one rules you, right? Like thinking about the wildness and appreciating all that the land gives us was a big focus that week. Um, so that like, here we go. Uh, let, let's, let's do a cover. So we were creating uh, the, that video and we were covering Danny's song. And um, there's something really 
interesting about kids singing grown up songs um, that almost give them a haunted feel. I remember listening to you know Alan Cross, that amazing podcaster uh, DJ from Toronto, and he he's just a, like a walking music encyclopedia. And one of his nights, he talked about outsider music, where you take performers who don't fit the mold of, of what that song's originally intended for, and you perform this sort of thing. Um, and I found that really interesting. So in my classes, we've always covered Bowie and Fleetwood Mac and and songs that have kind of sad themes. And you're thinking, okay. oh, gosh, maybe maybe that's a bit much for eight year olds. But if, if you've taught kids in primary junior, like their empathy is through the roof and they really attach to these messages and they have such a unique vision of what those lyrics can mean. They don't have the baggage that we have as grownups and that background knowledge. So their understanding is really pure. It, it was always kind of neat. And what I do is have them then do stop motion animation to um, kind of show, uh, showcase what the lyrics meant. And we put all our stop motion animations together and, record this music video and then actually cut a cover and, and, and share this in the gym in front of the whole school or something like that. And it's just one of those powerful experiences I'll, I'll always do as a teacher now. So this Danny Michelle song was the one we wanted to cover. The song stuck and, um, you know, it, it has a, a slightly haunted feel, um, but it's, it's cut straight from my classroom floor, you know, just me an acoustic guitar, a snowball mic, and, you know, 20 kids sitting as closely as they can on the carpet with the lyrics up on the smart board and us just trying our best to, um, to uh, do it justice. And what was really cool afterwards, I tweeted out the video and I tagged in Danny Michelle and he was gracious enough to tweet back some praise. And my students were just awestruck, right? Like what an experience from beginning to end for them. So can we, can we add the video to the blog post? Cause I want to play that song right now. Do you know what? It's, it's, the video is, is tricky because my kids are in it. The students are right. in it. So okay, one enough. of the things we can't share. So I, I know you see, there's an original that he has that I know you might link to on YouTube for me. Um, okay. But the audio you're going to hear is, is just kind of our, our shortened cover and uh, trying our best to do it justice. But thanks, Danny Michelle, because it was such an inspiring night. And it, I really, it, it fed forward into my classroom. You know that Danny Michelle's red guitar, like, matches the same thing that was on Pete Seeger's banjo, although Pete Seeger's passed away that, and I'm getting the same folk feel from all of this and the work that you're doing. It said this machine surrounds hate and forces it to surrender. And it made me think of that because of the purity and I have taught junior and I understand like if they ruled the world, the world would be a perfect place, except people will tattle on each other too much. Like that's really <laughs> the essence True. of it. So I really, I need to hear this song. What an incredible collaboration. And it must be something that's just resonated with them continually. I can't imagine that that won't be one of the greatest memories of their school experience, Jay, but let's play it. Oh, uh, I hope so. Sing if you want to sing. 
nobody rules you, but you guys rule for doing that. That is wild. What a lovely song. Do you know what? It, it's it's funny. I'm not an emotional person <laughs> in any kind of way, but there, there's something about that. Um, it just the, the power of music, right? Like that was over a year ago, but it just transports you. I, I'm in this darkened classroom. I, yeah, I, can, I can see the faces, right? It, it's it's just amazing how music has that that power. And um, it, it's a cool message and it's a message I need to continue to tell myself, right? So don't let them hold you down. Like the, the larger them, it's tricky, but just that, that motivational piece where I don't want it to be cheesy. I also, I'm not into like cheesy music, but you do need that kind of little anthem for yourself and give yourself permission to like take risks. And when I don't take risks in the classroom, I'm, I feel very bored and quite stifled. I need to do something that's different. And every time... I, I try something that I'm not sure is going to work out. I'm always thankful that I gave it a go because those are usually the experiences that um, stick out the most. Well, good for you because I mean, I, I feel similarly that way in terms of, you know, chasing big dreams and being okay if you kind of land not where you plan, but rolling with the learning regardless. And I think that, you know, those kinds of situations and those educators who model that, that risk taking becomes some of our greatest mentors in our learning. But sometimes when we want to shout and we can't shout or we can't love who we want to love, we need a song that can, you know, bring us up. So you kind of change the descriptor for this third song. Tell us a little bit about why that's your choice. Yeah. So this, this song is called up, up, up. And it's, it's a band called givers. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I, I don't have a lot of, um, history around this this band it truly really was one of the songs where i quickly downloaded the single and just kind of fell in love but i was just watching jimmy fallon years ago hmm. and i love how he brings on some some indie rock bands i'm like who are these guys and um they're just so much fun and like the song is kind of a rare positive looking like jam in a lot of ways um and it really just continues to build to like a frenetic spacey rock spaz out at the end um so so there's lots going on in it but um, it, it just touches on so many genres. And I, I mentioned earlier about like, you know, having the, that diverse playlist and there's very few genres that I, I can't connect to. And this one seems to throw in three or four somehow and it, and it just all works. So I kind of love that. And the parts come together to make a really distinct, distinctly uplifting kind of uh, jam. And, um, you know, and not to make too many <laughs> teacher um, you know, parallels here, but like it throws influences together. And, you know, I want my kids to be in classrooms where teachers are taking things from the real world, throwing them together and talking about influence and, and giving kids choice. I want my own children to be in a place where like they're creating and there's no one right way. And the teacher is a person who has an interesting, that, that teacher is an interesting person who does things outside of the school and they're sharing parts of their life, like to be that inspirational person and that, that mentor teacher and that teacher eventually remember because they did great things in a classroom, but you also knew they're an interesting person, right? Um, so I like mashing up all kinds of things at once in my classroom. And this song kind of represents that. There are two things that you got me thinking about. Like one of the things I loved the most in the evolution of Bloom's taxonomy was the realization that synthesis was not the pinnacle, but creativity. And I, that idea yeah. of what creativity really is as that optimal synthesis of of the symphony of all the different pieces coming together to create something totally new. And that's really what music does. So when you have a piece like this, that is eclectic and that comes from a different space and there's lots of different music that you can hear, I think it is a, a really good metaphor for what we're trying to do in the classroom. And, and in many ways, what we're trying to do outside the classroom to inform and infuse back into the classroom and have that, you know, design cycle as a human being because it's so hard to separate that from being the teacher that you are. So let's hear the song. Um, it's featured in the video game FIFA 12, which I was surprised by, but video games throw in some interesting songs sometimes. So here it is. Oh, we up, 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 up for the glow show. Yeah, we down, down here on the ground. Yeah, we up, 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 love. Yeah, we up, 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 up in the clouds. Yeah, we up. Yeah, we up. Yeah, we up.
that was fun. Um, I want to go back to a little bit of the work that you're doing because you sent me a link to um, create, explore, digitize, reflect. And I, I want to understand that as we share it out with people, not just through the audio, but through the blog post that will come out on Tuesday. Tell me a little bit more about that. Um, it, it was just kind of a, a mantra in, in my one bulletin board at the front of my classroom. I always like in the last few years just had five words and it was, you know, like, um, create, explore, digitize, reflect and connect. And to me that really encapsulated how I wanted learning to look in my classroom and outside of my classroom too, because we did a lot of community-based learning. Um, and I, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting right now. We're in a, uh, a tricky space where, um, you know, like the, the problems that screens have for us as humans and not just kids, uh, but the, the screen time issue. Um, but I always kind of went back and thought, you know what? I have access to one-on-one iPads. I, I, I had to do a lot of, you know, um, grant writing to get there. How can I use this opportunity, this u- unique opportunity with kids to kind of show that you know tech can be used in so many positive ways as long as it's as it's involved with creating um not just for consuming so we had a rule where you know we're creating and exploring and digitizing things we were never consuming things that were made by other people so it was just all about video and sound and and creating with apps and sharing with audience in mind all the time because as far as I'm concerned, if, if kids are working on something and it just kind of goes in a duo tang, hmm. it has an audience of one maybe, right. and it's sent home to parents like me in June, and they just go right into the recycle bin because that work, that opportunity to share what the kid's doing has already been long bypassed. Um, so the assessment uh, that, that goes with that, it's, 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 not, it's not impactful at that point. So we're always thinking about audience and creating things on the fly and defronting the room and using Apple TV and, and the kids work and the kids research and the kids creations really drove um, what our conversations were during the day. And the reflect and connect piece is probably the most important part of what our daily uh, process look like. And um, we did, uh, I, I did a grade list classroom last year where we just use single point reflective rubrics where they're always looking at criteria. They could choose whatever tools they wanted to produce X, Y, Z, but they always had to reflect on why that tool made the most sense for them, how they did on, you know, the certain criteria, a goal they'd set for themselves, plus something they're proud of. So they really got used to that script of all of us can improve at something, um, but all of us did something well. And what that looks like from student to student is completely different. And that's what makes a classroom an interesting, an interesting place. Um, so yeah, that was basically our mantra, right? Let's create things. Let's kind of show that tech can be used for good and, um, because it's powerful when it's used properly and let's make sure that we're reflective learners and, uh, we're not focused on a grade. We're focused on an experience and getting better. Wow. Well, this is Jay Dubois. If you want to get in touch with him, you can find him on Twitter at J underscore Dubois. Is there anything else you want to add before I play you out, Jay? Do you know what? I just want to say thanks. And do you know what? Like we mentioned earlier that that TEDx experience was the first time I saw you face to face. And right away, you kind of, you know, Jay's over there and you come over with a big hug. Like your your warmth and your approachability is is huge. And it speaks to why um, you're having all these exciting ventures go so positively. Right. So thanks for paying it forward. That's so nice. I'm a hugger. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, that, that made my night. That's so cool. I'm happy that you are here. I'm happy that you're part of the OEM connect team. And I look forward to learning a lot more from you. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining us on the P3, the personal playlist podcast. I'm Noah Daniel. This is voice ed radio. And I hope you have a fantastic day.